free BC. Hey, 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 this is your girl Joy, the cultural liturgist of 3BC with my 3BCs, one solo, Casey the Alchemist, and Chloe. Today, uh, we're doing a little cross pollinating. You know, ain't no hate in this world. You know what I'm saying? Like, we all talking about what we're talking about. So we're going to cross-pollinate today, which means that we're bringing in a guest from another podcast. And we're going to talk about stuff together today. And that is Bijou. And the podcast is Why We Hate Church Folks. So (laughs) let's get it going. And (laughs) specifically, we want to talk about the topic, um, why folks don't F with the church house like that. Why people don't fuck with the church house like that. We, we're we really yeah. blunt on here. So hopefully. Oh, you honey. Know, Welcome. We're really blunt. So Same. why Same people well. don't fuck with the church house? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We had a lot of thoughts about that. But Bijou, I'm going to kick it to you first because um, you guys, you know, this is really, you know, the lane that you operate in. So thoughts why people don't so why people don't oh i ain't never said the f word on the on, on the interwebs oh you don't really? have to don't let oh, us that's my favorite that's a respectable <laughs> thing to do just say it fuck, <laughs> it. No, no, no. fuck it just say it fuck it fuck it and i'm very false witness because anybody who know me know that's one of my favorite words but i don't be saying it across the mic i make the people say it for me um <laughs> <laughs> so we, we host a podcast, it's called Why We Hate Church Folk, and we qualify church folk. Um, I don't know about you guys, but even for me growing up Catholic, church is part of the most, some of the most uh, crucial formative years of my life or formative moments of my life. But we hate church folk because we define church folk as a group of people who um, you, you join their social club and then they now feel entitled to your time, your talents, your lifestyle, the way you do what you do, Right. I think people don't don't fool with the church heavy because a lot of times they don't give you room to grow. It doesn't make room for much more than what's acceptable in the box. It doesn't make room for non-traditional sexuality. It doesn't make room for gender. Right. It doesn't make room for making your money a certain way. Um, mm-hmm. it, it doesn't make room for a lot of things. And it's not not some because I'm not gonna be in the comments inevitably. No, my church. No, obviously no not your church ever. too. I was about to say you said non-traditional sexuality. Do they make room for sexuality at all in the church? Let me know where that church at. It's, it's a few. Well, some do, very few, very, very few. But there are very some. few. But they still if don't I'm not talk mistaken, about it. Well, they Methodists just, specifically have ordained gay women uh, to positions of power, bishops, and and things of that nature. There, it's out there um, in larger cities, DC and Atlanta. You have. LGBTQ churches, places where people can come and feel safe. But it's very strange that you have to have a church where people can come to feel safe in church. That's 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 um that's that's not a good look for the body. The church is also splitting the Methodist church over sexuality um, as well. Now that you bring it up. well, I have some Methodist pastors in my family that's how I know, but they're splitting on that or you have some who are open and then some mm-hmm. who are saying absolutely no. But yeah. I'm I'm with you on that. Yeah, what made um, you create a whole podcast about it? Mm-hmm. Uh so I have a co host, Jerry Woodley, and the, the show was actually his idea. Um, I got up one Sunday morning and decided I wanted to be on a podcast. So I got on Facebook. I was like, hey, who want to let me jump on this show? And um, <laughs> he had the one that resonated the most. So the, the accolades for the or the kudos or the credit for the name of it goes to him. But it's something that it, it affects me deeply. So we, we got a, we got a chance to talk to an amazing former pastor um, out of Canada, the naked pastor. You can follow him on socials. It's all together. He and I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell y'all what he said. Don't ever Google naked pastor. Okay, you have to run it all together, or it's gonna be. You don't want that. Um, and talking to him about how restrictive the church can be, specifically as a former minister. So I uh, did youth ministry for a long time, um, praise and worship team. And if any of you have ever been to a small church, less than 75 members. You know how it is. 
Um, if you, you know, you cooking plates, you direct in the choir, you then you leave tr- service and watch the kids and you clean up afterwards. It's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And it's tough to it's, it's tough to for so many reasons to engage in ministry. Is it bad that I, I think praise and worship is too long? I'm, I'm worried. No, it's I, not. I lose my attention span because it goes. That's OK. Too long. And don't dim the lights because I will be asleep. I have been to some churches that dim the lights. I'm like, am I in the mood for something? Because you know, I'm about to be knocked out. Maybe you're going to have to go to a more clubby church. We sh- and we should have one just for you. And and those like and you're not going to be that. that. Like I've seen churches where they have everybody there has tattoos or everybody is a bike rider. And there's, there should be more openness to where you feel like you fit in. The church is supposed to be for the community and and for people who don't normally go to church to outreach to them. But I find it becomes a social club, as you said, where everyone has to fit into a box or so be judged us, or be judged. And there's just a lot of judgment about the way you look, how you live. You know, when when my daughter's father was at Abyssinian, he was, you know, a, a younger pastor there. And um, I would come there with my hair as is, you know, whatever, mm-hmm. not traditional looking most of the time, not a traditional nine to five. So I wore jeans and stuff every day. Mm-hmm. And his like ignorant as neighbor. And I say that because I had never been so offended in my life. Asked him if I go to church and believe in God. I was like, I go to church more than this nigga. And he's in seminary. And it was very offensive to me. I just really, because I looked a certain way, mm-hmm. you know, now they're just now the um letting go of the creamy crack at the Harlem churches is good with braids and all that stuff. Brooklyn was fine. We happy, we've been happily nappy. But Harlem was like being in the South because a lot of people from the South deposited in Harlem. And there was just, I just felt so judged all the time by people there because I didn't look, I wasn't in the box. Yeah. You know, that, that kind of judgment is what led me away from all types of black churches and led me to embrace my Jewish heritage. Cause I've been to, you know, I grew up in a Baptist church um, during my time in the military, I went to other Baptist churches. I went to Kojic churches. Um, I've gone to, you know, Church of Christ churches. And I felt the same way every single time in a black church, no matter what the denomination was. And so when I got a chance to explore my Jewish heritage, that was the first time I'd ever felt at home and at peace in a church house. Yeah, it, it's interesting that... Uh... I mean, I, I went to church. I mean, I grew up in my church my whole life and then went to Chicago and went to the unapologetically black. <laughs> what, Trinity? <laughs> family Christian and unapologetically black. Trinity? Blackity, black, black. Yes, I did. So, <laughs> With Jeremiah. I Jeremiah. Rem, Rem, Jeremiah, Rem, Rem, Jeremiah. And so. Um, he black, black. He blackity, black, he black. Really and and oldest mother black, third black, is. Black. is no less blackity black black. Otis was at Morehouse when we when I was at Clark. So we're contemporaries, but um there is just a part of the colonization and patri I can't even create the word for like the patriarchy and the colonization of all of the faiths, quite frankly, that I just am like I'm over it. Like as and Christianity is the chief offender. But the way Islam, the way Hinduism, the way the way all of the faiths have been co-opted, the way the de- central deity has been made masculine, and that the women or the feminine entity has been rendered neutered or subjugated at best under somebody's foot, at best. and and the very natural components of human existence, sexuality, diversity of being, diversity of spirit, diversity of thought, the way. Everything natural about us is bad, is nasty. I was like, what is wrong with you people? And so I just, I just, you're like, period. No. you know, and you're then period. I, just, and then I is, think to myself, a thing. do you really think God who created the whole universe is really caring about this bullshit we down here talking about? 
Whether we like go that. on Sunday, whether we go on Saturday, whether your shirt short, whether your hair. You think God care about that bullshit? <laughs> it's just right. like, no, for real, think the God of the universe is care. concerned about this yeah. petty AF shit y'all talking about. Right. Yeah. Well, I grew up Methabaptist, and I had, and I say Methabaptist because when I was with my dad, I was Methodist. When I was with my mom, if it, who depended on whose weekend it was, mm -hmm. if I was Baptist or Methodist. So I got a little bit of both worlds. But I guess I'm fortunate to have gone with my dad, who's not isn't what is the typical minister that's putting rules on his kids or whatever, and was like. You know, sexuality is a part of human nature. But I, what I do like about him is that he does say, you know, maybe we were wrong about certain things or maybe we should look at certain things. But there are so few people who do that. And there have been times where he's had members that have wanted to put him out of the church, you know, speaking of church people, because he was breaking with traditions or wanted to say, hey, this is old. Let's think. You know, for instance, he took a Sunday school class to see Hustle and Flow and the church members got mad. Now, I'm I would just say where Hustle and Flow took place was very close to his church and they were mad about it. And he was like, we have Hustle and Flow outside the door every day. So why are you mad? Do you think this doesn't exist? We need to be reaching out to the people. That's what we're here to do. This isn't for you. The people who allegedly have it together is to help those in need. That's the purpose of the church. But I don't think people recognize the purpose of the church anymore. Would you agree with that? 100 percent. And, and all the points that you guys are making, we love to talk about on the show about how Christianity has been co-opted to subjugate an entire race of people, then to turn around and subjugate women and people taking scriptures and flipping them to control mm -hmm. instead right. of to give people room and license. When you think about the heroes of faith, you're talking about adulterers, rapists, murderers, mm -hmm. and sex workers, right? Mm -hmm. And who's our favorite female hero from the Bible? Rahab, Mar a whole prostitute. Mm -hmm. And so was like, Mary Magdalene, right? Yes. You know, they say a lot of things, but maybe she got a, a whole rep because she was Jesus' girlfriend and they didn't feel like the Savior should be in a relationship. Who knows? Maybe she used to wear her split in the front of her skirt. We have no idea. I believe that God is God. I believe that the word of God is infallible. And I believe that the Bible is a compilation that was facilitated by gay homophobes and misogynists. Well, King James was questionable, was he not? I don't know how many questions there are. I mean, you know, they made, they wrote the history down, so whatever, but. He being, apparently was a questionable character. Be, being gay is not, it's a thing that happens. Um, if you put a seed in the ground and leave it alone and it gets enough water and enough sunlight, even if you do nothing else, it will grow. Plants are a thing that happen and, and gays are a thing that happens. Uh, sure. Any gender, queer sexuality, it happens in humans, it happens in animals, it happens with babies who don't even, they don't have intent. Um, it's it's a thing that happens. So I, I don't, it would be nice if the church could be inclusive and leave room for people and mess and mistakes, but that's really, really hard to work with. And But life is messy. I mean, that's just the reality of it. Life is messy. It is not neat and clean. But anybody who's had church experience, and I normally don't drag the church, I want to highlight the problems that I have with it and then hopefully work toward some sort of solution because church be lit sometimes when they're not right. telling me what to do and how to dress. Like they there do. are parts of it that are amazing. Well, I, I heard a good thing from my mom's pastor um, once, and, and he was talking about how the church uses the gay community, meaning they're okay to direct the choirs. They're okay to play. As long, and it's just not talked about as long as it's not talked as about. As long as it's not talked mm -hmm. about. But we, we use them. And he talked about that because his brother 
um, was gay and died from AIDS, unfortunately. But he was saying how the church was very comfortable using all of his all of his mm -hmm. gifts. And it struck him after he died. And he was looking around like, it's fine for us to use them for everything as long as they're quiet about it. And mm -hmm. he said, you're basically using another human being. And they're still a child of God, just like everybody else. And, and, and using their yeah. resources as well, right. because what is it? Two men. And they have what? High disposable income. Right. And most exactly. likely Even no if it's children. Time and talents. And, and it's, it's the church. The church as we know it. I was born and reared in America. Um, I've been black all my life. And even in Catholicism, I believe that the church as we know it has always been a vehicle for misogyny and white supremacy, specifically white supremacy. So I don't, I don't know. It takes a lot of work to remove the reins of all that control and present the good news versus telling people what to do. And absolute power corrects absolutely. If I can sit up in a big chair and tell you, if you do such and such, your eternal, your eternal soul is in jeopardy. If you don't live your life this way, you won't be able to experience paradise. That is a position that some people really seem to enjoy. Right. And I think that comes from the leader down as well. The leader has to recognize and say, how am I living my life? And you all talked about Trinity, which also leads me back to Jeremiah. Right. And something else interesting, he said at um, my mom's church, but basically they were doing the study with the deacons or whatever. And he said somebody was asking about homosexuality and gays in church. And he said that he had to check himself that he realized when it was time to go hug people in the audience, um, you know how they have fellowship or hug time or whatever at church, that he would veer away from that group. And in his mind, he's thinking, I'm accepting of gay people. We teach sex education here. We are open. And it hit him one day, I never go to that section where a few gay men sit. And why do I do that? Mm. And is it church? Is it biblical reading that I'm hesitant? What is it? And he said he called a friend and he said, well, do you think it's wrong? What is it? And the guy just said, well, what does the Bible say about coming to Christ? And he said, well, it says whosoever will. And he said, well, that's just where you need to stop. It's whosoever will. It's none of your business if they're gay, straight, black, white, whatever. It's whosoever will come. It and accept Christ is welcome. That's all you need to be concerned about. And he said it, that one thing just kind of changed how he was thinking. But he said sometimes you have to stop and check yourself to even say, am I as open as I think I am? As I am loving as I say I am? Mm -hmm. And if not, what do I need to do about it? So I think that's one thing church people, all church people need to do. We're supposed to do it what, before communion, check yourself. Before you but you need to check yeah. yourself every day. Every you know, day. So we have to you check don't yourself think about it at every least day. Think about it that once a month. I mean, the first Sunday. <laughs> yeah. At least oh, when you, you put your white napkin, you, you, you get a reminder. You shouldn't take communion if you have ought with someone. So usually right. people interpret that as as long as I don't have beef with anybody, you know, then I'm good and I can take communion and I'm not going to drink damnation unto myself. They don't use it as a moment to check their prejudices. And that's right. a problem. But where would you learn that? And so that's what, what, what you're saying. It's a top down thing. Christianity right. as a whole American Christianity. That's what we like to call it on the show. So, cause I don't, you know, we don't know where people are listening from, but American Christianity. And I consider myself a Baptist um, so I can't I ain't got no footwork, but I definitely pray in the spirit. Um, <laughs> as a as a Baptist Costa, we really have to in, in in American Christianity, we really have to take a look at our own biases. And I feel like as church folk, if we could look at our own biases, we will start to say, why do we always talk about homosexuality? I'm using air quotes. Why do we always talk about homosexuality, and we rarely talk about fiscal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. No, no, like I feel like I feel like, as, I feel like we I feel like we need to take I just feel like there needs to be a bigger step back. Like like Christian supremacy drives me crazy. It's tough. Like like this is a big ass planet and guess mm -hmm. what? 
people believe a whole bunch of other stuff that ain't it's Jesus right. and that ain't Christianity. And we don't make any room for it. You for go up in the don't. Tennessee yeah. Country Bumpkin General Assembly and we praying to Jesus. What the heck? Can I be a Muslim up in here? Elijah just right. good to me and my head. Anyway, you know, all, can we do the Baha'i like thing? Can I do, you know, some spiritualism up in here? Right. And so I think we because, you know, because everybody's every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. That sounds as racist to me. That sounds as white supremacist and Christian it's, and faith supremacist to me really as tough. damn white people are superior to black people. Don't come telling me that your Jesus is better than my Allah. I don't want to hear it. Don't come it's telling really me weird. that you need to go preach and the also, gospel to me because I'm a Hindu. I don't want to hear it. You can't come to me and tell me nothing right. about how superior your God is to my God. I don't want to hear it. And so we need to step a whole mm -hmm. bunch of steps back and take a whole bunch of seats because we are good at saying Jesus is the way and everybody else got it wrong. So we need to step right. back and just give people room, just like we want to give people room to be gay and people room to be freaks. That's my preferred, that's my prefer preferred seeing. All right. You know, we got to get that room to love God in the God entity. That exactly. God is big enough He's to, and, to and get he all of us. God, I, promise God I don't feel like I'm a book tail wide open for you, Hindu. I just don't. But it's, we, it's, we would be led to believe every knee got to bow and every tongue got to confess to Jesus, Lord. If you don't do that, then hell be unto you. And I'm just like, that. Hell, I, I, and I have lots of questions about it. Like, are we, uh, because this might be something like hell anyway. We're not sure. Hello, um, mm -hmm. I, it's just, God is big enough to handle all the questions, all the different information. But in the Christianity that we're accustomed to, we talk a lot about witnessing and we don't do a lot of listening. So in my mind, if you look at Jesus, Jesus encounters a woman at a well. She's running away from her peers because she don't want to get um, she, she tired of getting talked about in scorn. She got seven husbands or six husbands and this seventh one ain't even her man. Um, when he when he comes across anyone, he heals them all. It's not just him talking their faces off until they'd be like, "Okay, God, I'm ready to do whatever you say." Mm -hmm. Right. It's conversational. He's he's communing with these people. He's talking to them. You hear people maligning Jesus because he hangs out with tax collectors and yeah. sinners. He walks that's, among that's, the people. And that's the person you call yourself a Christian. And I think for a lot of people, you'd be more um, accurate if you said, "I'm a." John the Baptist or I'm a mm -hmm. Abrahamist. You your your mm -hmm. your walk is nothing like or Jesus. Herod. Mm -hmm. How about that? Or Herod. You know, you're, you're nothing like Jesus. And it's it's upsetting me and my own girls. You, well, know, you know, and go ahead, I, Casey. I would like I would like for black people specifically to remember we did not start off with Christianity. Correct. That is not our heritage. It is mm -hmm. not, you know. I was led to my Orisha, which is Yemaya. And, okay. you know, as I transitioned from Christianity to Judaism, I had some conflict about what I had been taught to believe all of my life mm -hmm. versus the, the new beliefs that I was embracing. And then I was led to, you know, the knowledge about the Orishas and Oshan and Yemaya, you know, and Papa Alegba. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, I you Christianity teaches you that you have to fit into this one box and believe this one set of things or you're going to hell. Because it has only been black Christians who has ever said to me, oh, you're Jewish? You know y'all killed Jesus. Which is not true, first and foremost. But if that's the case, why would you say something so ugly to me? Simply because I have embraced a new religion. It's still the same thing. It's still the same Bible. It just cuts off here where yours continues and goes on here. And the same. And it's not life. even a full continuation because they're not all in there. Yeah, the same. So, uh, well, you're right. One solo the same for Islam and the Quran. Yeah, yeah. And if you actually read different Bibles, they're all quite similar. They, um, they really are. They are. I like buying the Hindu for dummies, Buddhism for dummy books, because I like learning about different religions and from what i found they all have the same very similar stories to jesus christ so 
I'm like, uh, I think it's the Bible, like you said, is a collection of books that's meant to be a guidebook, mm-hmm. not necessarily taken word for word. Because if that were the case, God would be a horrible person if you mm-hmm. read some of the things in the very beginning. And so and that's what we've been showing people is a horrible God. A horrible mm-hmm. God who will judge you, who doesn't want you as you are. If you mm-hmm. don't change and change and change again mm-hmm. and smush yourself into a box, I will not love you. And that is not good news. Mm-hmm. Right. It's not at all. And, and, and I think it's my love you. And my, it my church cool. you and all this, all this other foolery. Mm-hmm. And, and that's what I wanted to mention, too. There are so many parallels. People love to call. And that's the follow up question I'll have in a minute. People love to call African spirituality and African religions, you know, Yoruba, even the Afro Caribbean religions, Santeria and Candomblé and all of that. Voodoo is not even voodoo, it's Voodoo. And they like to call it, you know, witchcraft and black mm-hmm. magic and all of this other stuff. But it's really a few, you know, there's a few bad eggs and everything. Somebody misuses it and misuses their powers or misuses their gifts or whatever but really it's a spirituality just like any any anything else and there's so many parallels and so many things in the black church that are rooted in african um and afro-caribbean spiritual practices and i think if they take the time to look at that and really understand it they will see you know we're still underneath it all low-key honoring those roots in a sense so i i say on the pod american christianity is not a thinking man's game and you yes. know what i'm saying your mama. <laughs> yes, <it's just> <laughs> mm-hmm. because we're talking about this <laughs> amen we're talking about this big old god that we serve right and to me truth to me truth is a thread that regardless of where i go in this world i can find I can find love your neighbor, respect your body and other people's belongings, do well unto others. I can find that that thread of truth in every religion. And if you look back and be honest, okay, um, anybody who's been to Kojic Church or some Pentecostal, you know, you want to go and tarry for the Holy Ghost, okay? Mm-hmm. I'd be lying if I said that that wasn't the same as the trans. Even mm-hmm. in the CCM movement, somebody like Benny Hinn, so I don't know, if you, I used to be like, heavy evangelical before it was a bad word that this was the same thing as racist um <laughs> and when benny Hinn goes out and heals and i really do believe that people uh, experience healing in those meetings what y'all don't know is three hours before the service starts the people are in there worshiping until they don't know where they are hmm. you will sing yourself dizzy and the spirit be so high that people get in there and get up out their wheelchairs. Hmm. It's and it's not like it's it's not a secret. It's just that people don't think about it. That mm-hmm. atmosphere for healing is something that they take hours to build so that people can can literally get in there and run when they couldn't run before and have mm-hmm. their cancer be removed. It's not it is magic. If you if you look at it, it you can make it make sense. But the problem is that American Christianity has offered us a very small box. Mm-hmm. It doesn't leave room for anything but our terminology and our way of thinking and our way of doing things. And if someone tries to deviate, we find a scripture to control them. Mm-hmm. But once again, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, if you consider yourself a Christian, that man was a rabble rouser. Mm-hmm. The Jews said, don't don't work on the Sabbath. Jesus said, it's people sick out here. I'm finna heal them all. I'm finna mm-hmm. heal everybody. They pull them to the side. They're like, Jesus, you're violating the law. Bro, what would you have me do? I'm finna heal these people. He mm-hmm. became a big problem. They killed them. But so and then so I two questions. Why do you think I mean, well, it's programming and indoctrination, but it is interesting to me that people um, find it OK to have an oil cloth, or the spring water, whatever the hell they sell on these late night BET commercials. So Reverend Pop Off. And I the people name is Pop mushing off. you on the forehead you know, and calling it healing. Come on, But then they're doing the same thing. African spiritualists and spiritual leaders are doing the same thing. They're doing the same 
thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's a problem because I guess of the skin they're in maybe, or the, the continent because they're on the continent and not here. But I wanted to also dovetail into this article before we wrap. Um, I found it. I don't know if it's the exact same one, but they talked about how 30 um, people under 30 are three times as more like more likely um, to not go to church than people over 50 because they are turning more to African spirituality. And I wanted to just briefly talk about that before we um, wrap up the conversation, because I think that is important to talk about African spirituality and to it's particularly with you being from Cameroon, I think it's particularly relevant, but to talk about how that's important, how it can be incorporated into our daily lives. And we can honor the ancestors just as much as we honor God. I mean, there's, you know, or the Egun, if it's, you know, Ifa or Yoruba, you can honor your Egun just as much as you honor God. And it is not, um, it is not heresy or sacrilege to do so. It's so, and the, I'm, I, I can only talk about me. First of all, I'll be honest and say that there are um, realms of spirituality that I have been granted access to that made me feel very uncomfortable because of my programming. Um, it's also ironic that when I prayed and asked God to close the door, God was faithful to do so. Um, I'll also say that it was it's easy because of our programming and it's so subtle the way it happened to us. Mm -hmm. But when we think of the angels, we always think of little pale babies, chunky babies with wings mm -hmm. flying around doing the work of God. But if anybody has seen an angel, like if you feel like you've had an encounter with with an angel, they're nothing like babies. They're not very small. Um, and when I think of the angels, I think about my ancestors. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to experience them in that way. Black because those people. are your angels. Those are your angels. Your ancestors are your angels. It's it's not different. It's just that we weren't taught that it's the same. You yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because the American Christianity that we have experienced is a man saying something that a man told him in another generation that a man told him, that a man told him, that mm -hmm. a slave owner told him he could tell. Yeah. Right. Right. That's what I wanted to bring up too. I'm glad you mentioned it's, that. It's they, just big they old lies. They, they came in to civilize the savages. Anything from the continent, our languages, our traditions, it's not okay because it doesn't facilitate the control. Right. It's up to us to be brave enough to confront our own bias, to confront our own programming and say, let me let me read up on Arisha. Let me read up yeah. on, on whatever, Santeria. Yeah. Now it's there is there is power in the name of Jesus. Yes. There is power in the ocean. There is baby. I I'm not Yoruba, but you can't tell me. You can't tell me ain't no power over there. You can't you just can't tell me that. Say, and yeah. it's a trial and true system, it works. And it's so funny because you be quick to call somebody pagan behind blood sacrifices, but yeah. you're a Christian. Yeah. We're talking about mm -hmm. transmuting and transfiguration. You believe in a, a man born of a virgin, gave his life, he was the sure. son of God, gave his life, suffered, bled, died, uh, tore a veil between uh, us and heaven, rose again on the third day, ushered in Pentecost, and then got off work, went back to heaven. Then right. I grew up Catholic, so we go around the church drinking out the same cup of wine, believing that in our bodies it's transfigured into the body and blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're vampires. But you, everything mm, exactly. else is it's very similar because you it, yeah. don't understand it and you can't explain it. And mm -hmm. all spirituality doesn't have to be explained. It don't have to be understood. But what I do know is that when I believe in the blood sacrifice of Jesus and somebody else does a dance over a trance and some chicken blood, if we both get results, they probably both true. Word. That's a good point. And then we yeah. and we have been conditioned to actively participate in the erasure of our own culture that part yes so we have to really be mindful of the information that we take in but that part that you said was uh well i don't know we're gonna air it probably through the week but for now it's a, a sunday morning word on a saturday afternoon girl 
Because mm-hmm. it's up to, to us to do the work. The roots for pointing that out too. Yeah, it's yeah. it's the, on, the church. That the, out. the church yeah. is never going to fix it. the the church is never going to fix it. Okay, it's up to us to do our own work. And yes. the same way that the body of Christ started in the Bible, we can congregate in our own homes. Yes. We can get together and practice our whatever. We we don't have to forsake the assembly together of ourselves on whatever we be on. Because right. nobody's going to do this work for us. We're not nowhere. They won't, we won't do it here. We're not going to do it in, on the continent. It's going to start with you and your home, embracing your spiritual practice and connecting to God in your own way, whatever you call it. I mean, I when I tell you I have read scripture, I like Jesus. He's a friend of mine. I also avidly study astrology and use it in practical application along with scripture to edify my own self. I will babble in tongues, read an ephemeris, and then cuss you out over brunch. If <laughs> Amen. I still love me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good and that is, a, that is a great place to wrap. That's a perfect note and a perfect way to punctuate this conversation. Thank you so much, Bijou, for joining us today. I really Thank appreciate you. you. This has been a great conversation. We might need to double back and have a part two or something. But this has been a great Come conversation. On. The people have been edified today. And, and the, the Lord, Lord has been, been glorified. glorified and the Amen. devil has been horrified. Amen, sister. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. Yeah. Thank right, you, Brandon, everybody, so for listening to 3BC once again. This has been, again, this has been an awesome conversation. Thank you to our special guest, Bijou. Thank you to One Solo, Casey the Alchemist, and Chloe. That's my 3BCs. I'm Joy, your cultural liturgist for this cultural conversation. And Jesus is a black man, y'all. Get I'm into just saying, it. Into Get it. into it. All right. Talk to y'all next time. Be safe. Um, nobody's coming. So figure it out for yourself. Get in tune. And I see the God in you. Next time. Bye. 3BC. Recorded at Kazukian Studios. Directed, produced, and distributed by Kazukian. Join the conversation at facebook.com slash 3BC.